So those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I love to try and combine mediums to create cool effects and make new products. I've mixed sublimation with acrylic, acrylic with 3D printing, 3D printing with sublimation. And now I've gone and tried another combination with 3D printing on fabric to make lace inspired bookmarks. So last week I happened to be on while the podcast, How Would You Slice That? was live and featuring the amazing artist Kazen 3D. He's been 3D printing on fabric for a few years now to create cosplay designs as well as unique items. The podcast was a great dive into the process, how to optimize your settings and what kind of material you can use. While I wasn't necessarily wanting to print flexible fabric or anything, at least not right now, he did get me thinking about how this technique could be incorporated into my own designs. One of which I had recently been toying around with, which was 3D printed lace. Now, before you guys click off the video, just because you're not interested in 3D printing lace, hear me out for a second. This technique can be used to create illusion-like designs, pieces that have areas where it almost looks like the 3D print is suspended. And I'm not just talking about the really cool technique where you've got like all these thin little pieces of filament that you see on Maker Lab that can make some really cool suspended designs. I'm talking things that almost look like there's nothing there. And as a result, you can create some really cool effects. So let me show you how I set up creating this lace design got the kinks kind of worked out. And then I went on to expand on this idea and create these really cool looking tarot style bookmarks. So as you can see, I've created these lace bookmarks to test. I set up the design using a pattern I found on Creative Fabrica, which I then cleaned and trimmed to a bookmark shape. I just did a simple export to DXF and then extruded the design over in Shaper 3D. I'll probably cover that technique more in a future video at some point. Using my standard bookmark settings, I added a pause in the print before layer five, roughly halfway through so that I could lay a layer of tool fabric onto the plate. I printed the bookmarks on a smooth PEI plate. You could also use one of the holographic plates that are available as well, but for this one, I opted just to use a smooth flat one. Just prior to printing layer five, the printer paused like I instructed it, and I proceeded to place a piece of this white glitter tool. This was fabric I got at Joann's. It's standard tool and decently sturdy. I know if you wanted to print more fabric-like material, it's recommended to use something like super mesh, but since these are bookmarks with a border, I opted to just use regular tool. I secured the fabric in place using some magnetic strips that I had lying around, and I made sure the material was pulled taut and flat against the bottom of the bed. Now, I did place this with the plate in the machine because I was worried about alignment, but I have since then learned to just take the plate out and attach the fabric, and it doesn't seem to cause any problems. Now, with my initial bookmark settings, I found that the printer was moving too fast and almost snagged the tool, so I had to drop it down to silent mode. But once I did that, the material seemed to adhere and seal the tool in without any issue. So now that I've figured out how I can get the tool to lay between prints successfully, not get caught up in the machine, and I can get this neat effect, I went on then to see how could I expand with this design and create things that almost look like they're sort of suspended. Like they're, with the, the lace pattern here, everything is connected, but I wanted to see could areas be completely disconnected and still work and be set within the print. First thing I did was set up my design. I used this transparent PNG that I got on Creative Fabrica and filled it with color in Procreate. I'm pretty sure this was an AI generated image because after a while I noticed some irregularities in the skeleton and ended up making several adjustments to get it to look accurate. Even now I can see I missed some things, but as a design, I think it's cohesive enough at this point to work. To create a colored print design, I took this file and uploaded it to the keychain feature on Maker World. Initially, the auto color matching looks weird, but that's because it defaults to four colors and this is a six color design. Once I switch to the eight color option, it looks much better. Maker World isn't perfect and it does think there might be more colors, but I can easily hover over them and set them to the correct color. After I have done that, I just tap the brush icon and clear out any unused colors. Once I have the colors fixed, I'll adjust the print to the size I want. This is in millimeters, but typically I use a height of 152.4, which translates to six inches. 
Then I do some final adjustments, including reducing the back thickness to 0.5 millimeters and the image thickness to 0.5 millimeters. I choose to leave the back half black to save on filament purge and improve the print time. It also gives me a halfway point to look for later. Once all of this is changed, I'll export it out, making sure to select a 0.2 millimeter nozzle profile for detail and picking the .3mf extension. If you pick the .stl option, you're going to lose all the painting that's done in here for you. Now back in the slicer, it's time to set up the plate and print profile. First thing I always do is switch to my printer nozzle. Maker Lab defaults to the X1C and I have AP1S, so I always change that first. And then I remove that wasteful print tower so I have a clean plate with just my print. I'm printing top side down so I have a nice smooth finish, so the first thing I do is flip the print. In theory, you're supposed to be able to do this in Maker Lab, but I've found it seems to mess things up over here in the slicer, so I just opt to do the flipping myself once I get to this point. I also try to fill the bed with as many copies as I can to minimize waste, which in this case is really only two cards. I line them up on the plate with a bit of room in between so I can cut them out comfortably later. Now let's work on setting up the print profile. I got most of these settings from Kaizen 3D with some slight tailoring given I'm using a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. First, I changed the initial layer height to 0.14 and made sure the wall generator is set to arcane. Then uh, the sparse infill density is set to zero. There's only a few layers of this print, so they will be completely filled in. And I'm actually not even sure this makes a difference, but I'm gonna set it like he showed anyway. Now speed is where we're gonna make the most changes. We're going to slow things down, setting the initial layer and infill to 35 and the walls infill and top surface to 50. Another change we're going to make is cutting the acceleration settings in half to 500, 250, and 2500. This is going to help prevent snagging of the material. It allows for enough time for the fabric to spring back if it's jarred by the tip. Bamboo printers are fast, but when working with mesh fabric, it can be a little too fast. Once I've got it sliced, I'll get a time and a filament total. It's a longer print, but I don't mind. Then I'm going to find the layer transition point where we go from color to just straight black. Remember, the pause is going to happen before the layer you select is printed. Now it's just a matter of watching the print do its work. I feel like the additional layer thickness helped to get some nice clean lines, so I may try that with my regular bookmarks. Just like before, when the printer pauses, I go in and lay down the tool. Now I use black tool for this print, which I think goes better with the color scheme. Again, I secured it with magnets in a taut layer and restarted the print. I also cut up my magnet strips, which made the fabric tightening process easier. As you can see, I put the pause in the right spot and all of the filament going down on the tool is just straight black. The adjustments to speed and acceleration also seem to work and I'm not noticing the tool being pulled like I initially saw in my first experiment. A few more hours later, we're done and I'm ready to pop the prints off. I did find these stuck to the bed a little more than I expected, so I recommend waiting for them to cool a bit, but they eventually popped off without breaking anything. Now it's just a matter of trimming the excess tool. You can use a rotary cutter or even just a pair of scissors to trim the excess. If you notice any stragglers, you can use a lighter or a heat gun to melt them down. Tool is made of polyester, so the little strands act the same way as the stringing you sometimes get from a 3D print. With the print complete, you can see how this creates an illusion of a suspended design, especially when using this black tool. So now that I've shown you how this technique works, I want to see what you guys come up with. Drop me a comment below on how you think you can use this mesh fabric technique in your own designs. If you want to see more content like this, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and lick the video as well so that you can tell the eldritch algorithm beast that this was a good one. Eat this video. Keep, keep, share, it, share it with other people. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.